Good evening, and welcome back to the coffee bar in my home. This is Joseph Brewer, and we're discussing my book, uh, Practical Guide for Church Ushers and Greeters. Tonight's session is uh, number eight, and uh, I hope that these are a blessing for you. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Uh, we're going to start on security. It's uh, that's probably the, the biggest topic that people want to discuss when they're talking about uh, issues at church and um, as far as ushering, greeting, and those types of things. So um, this one's going to take two or three sessions, and um, it's going to be a lot of generalities, and then I'll tell you the things that we did and give you some resources. So um, first and foremost, always be prayed up. Um, the, the one thing about security that we know is our primary source of security is God. Um, without God's protection, without God's hand, um, we're in trouble. So um, be prayed up. Um, ask for God to protect your church. And um, that's that's our primary source of security so um just don't ever don't ever forget that part to be prayed up and ask god for his protection now there's a little bit of controversy on whether uh the difference between self-defense vengeance um persecution and i'll try and sort that out a little bit for you and your thinking now you're going to have to come to your own conclusion on this um i think the bible's pretty clear cut on it i think self-defense is absolutely okay i, I don't see a problem with self-defense at all um so something that uh have to consider is that in the garden, um, we see Jesus' opinion on weapons to some degree. So Peter was carrying a sword. And it's likely at times that he was carrying that sword concealed um, because of keeping it cool enough to be able to touch so um he was carrying the most modern up-to-date weapon personal security weapon of that time and when he used it uh and he cut the ear off in the garden um jesus wasn't appalled at him for carrying it, for having it, um, where the problem was, um, Peter was interfering with God's plan at that moment, and it wasn't that he was had the weapon. Jesus didn't say, "Oh, what are you doing with that? Get rid of that." Um, you know, no man that follows me should ever carry a weapon. He didn't say anything like that. He told Peter to put it back in its place because it was going against God's will at the moment um, to interfere with Jesus' arrest. Um, so something to keep in mind on that because it, you know, to me, so then you start running with these, you know, some of this logically. So Peter had been carrying that all along. Um, the places they went, the things they did, Peter had the most modern up-to-date weapon on him. Um, so I'm sure that it was utilized as a tool. I'm sure that it was utilized um, for self-defense and for protection uh, against people, against um, wild beasts. So I think there's something to be said for um self-defense and for being armed and um and carrying weapons now <clears throat> if your church 
has a specific policy on that, I suggest you follow that policy. Um, if your pastor has specific feelings on that, I suggest you abide by that as well. Um, but uh, um, whatever your church's policies and your pastor's beliefs on that, um, I think you should abide by those. Um, that's just my suggestion. Now, the Bible does say that vengeance is the Lord's. So where self-defense stops, um, now self-defense, that's somebody who's just coming in and just to hurt people. There's a difference between persecution and terrorism. I, I'm of the opinion that, that, that there is a separation there, that persecution, this is where they come in, somebody comes in armed, they line you up against the wall, and they tell you, deny Christ or die. Um, I think at that point, you can't deny Christ. Um, so you're going to take the bullet at that moment. And I believe that's persecution. Now, if somebody just, say, comes in and starts shooting the place up, that's terrorism. That's not persecution. That's terrorism. And at that point, I think it's incumbent upon you to try to stop that and enact a self-defense uh, mechanism or strategy at that point. Hopefully, uh, you have people who are armed in your auditorium, um, that's personal opinion, um, who have the training, the ability, the willingness to stop that act of terrorism and so then um once self-defense stops so scenario suppose somebody comes in starts shooting you have somebody who's armed uh they return fire and the person who was committing the act of terror exits the building um, and they are fleeing up the street. I'm of the opinion that the moment that that act of terror stops and that person is fleeing, then for you to discharge a weapon to shoot them, that would be vengeance and not self-defense. I, th I think that it's something for you to do some research on, give some serious prayer and consideration to, but vengeance is God's. Vengeance isn't ours. So once you stop that threat, once self-defense ends and you no longer, that threat has stopped, there's no more threat, They're, they've left, um you don't run out of the building and shoot at them um now if you step outside and they are firing well then you do what you need to do um my personal preference is that anybody who's carrying has some training i've been shooting my whole life and i trained um with uh, my pastor and I trained with uh, um, LAPD uh, SWAT team leaders through a private organization. And I can tell you, even with all my years of shooting growing up, that that training was critical. That training was imperative. Um, and I believe that if somebody's going to carry um, in your auditorium, they should have some level of training. That's that's just my opinion. Um, and uh, that's something for you, your church, um, whoever's in charge of security, to um, your pastor, to determine 
Um, but I believe that uh, that firearms training is um, imperative if you're going to carry and uh, where you're going to be um, potentially saving lives. So but just remember that where self-defense stops is where vengeance and um, begins if you keep it going. That doesn't mean don't call the police. That doesn't mean don't um, prepare yourself uh, to repel them if they decide to come back for some reason. But there is a difference between persecution and terrorism. There's a difference between self-defense and vengeance. Um, allow God to be God. Let God have his vengeance. Um, there was uh, an a church shooting in South Africa. And <clears throat> I can't think of the name of it, but uh, I will uh, I'll see if I can find it for next time. And um, I will uh, give you that resource. Terrorists went into a church to shoot it up. Guy had a, I think it was a five shot revolver. And he returned fire. The simple fact that he returned fire, the terrorists fled. He let them go. They were later arrested um, while they were in jail. This man went and witnessed to these terrorists while they were in jail. And a couple of them ended up getting saved. Um, I So... God's hand isn't shortened. Um, don't, um, you know, let God be God, like I said, you know, and, and vengeance is God's, vengeance isn't ours. And, you know, had he chased them down and killed them, well, those men might not have ever been saved. Well, in fact, we know they wouldn't have been saved. So, um, you know, I thought it was very interesting that the fact that where self-defense stopped, he did not engage in vengeance, and he saw men saved as a result. So I thought that was thought that was very uh, wow, I'm, wow. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, it, it's kind of a tough subject. Um, I've had some debate with some people. Uh, some people believe that you know anybody that comes into a church uh intent on harm is persecution but i disagree um i think that uh you know there's a difference um terrorism there's a difference between terrorism and persecution so anyway something for you to pray about study give careful consideration to and like i said i would abide by whatever your church or your pastor's policies are um, situational awareness is something that every person in your church needs to practice and needs to understand. Um, learn what your normal is. I don't normally like saying your truth, your normal, but um, in your church, your circumstances are going to be different than mine. So you're going to have different things that come up and you're going to do things differently. So um, your particular situation, um, you need to have situational awareness for. And so, you know, you're going to know what is normal um, where you're at. Is it normal for homeless people to be walking through your property? Is it normal um, for you know, any host of things? Um, I don't know what your particular um, situations are. So you have to understand what's normal for your particular situation. And then whatever happens outside of normal, that's where situational awareness comes in. That's where you start paying attention. Um, that's where the spidey senses kick in. And so, you know, if something 
feels off, seems off. Um, don't dismiss that. Um, that's part of situational awareness. That could be God um, letting you know, hey, pay attention. There's a problem here. Um, so let somebody know um, if something seems off. I don't care if it seems silly to you. I don't care if it, you know, it's like, it, it may be nothing. Okay, but what if it is? You know, just go let whoever's in charge of security know. Just, it may be nothing. But this just seems off. This isn't part of the norm. Um, and I'm just letting you know, and I'll let you take it from there. So, and, and as somebody in charge of security, uh, you want those people to come to you and you want them to be comfortable to come to you. You want them to say, hey, you know, uh, something's wrong here. Something, something's off. And so that you can, you know, put eyes on it. So you can make sure that there isn't a security threat that needs to be addressed. Um, you know, I, we had these, uh, this some guy that he came, um, snuck into our building early uh, while our choir was practicing, started taking pictures and videos in the auditorium. And um, the uh, one of the ladies that was in there, she came running to find me. And I went and confronted him. Turned out it was nothing. Turned out that uh, his family, he was somebody I hadn't seen before, didn't know. Uh, but he, he knew the names of members, uh, longtime members, and his family were, in his words, founding members of the church. And so he was just getting some pictures of the auditorium and some video to show. But she was comfortable enough to, you know, quickly come and get me. Um, I responded quickly. And I, you know, I cut the guy off. I was made sure he knew that, uh, you know, it didn't go unchallenged and that uh, it wasn't acceptable. And I just told him, you're scaring folks um, and I can't have you doing that. So he, he was pretty irritated with me, but so what? Um, and that moment uh, he scared people and he needed to know that that's not acceptable. So I put myself between him and um, the people at my church to watch out for him. And uh, so I just, you know, I'm, I'm glad she came and got me. I'm glad she told me because I didn't see it. I, I wasn't in a position to see that. It was, uh, oh, an hour and a half um, before our church services began. So, um, but anyway, um, but that situational awareness part, you know, I mean, that's, that's an extreme situation where that she saw, but it's still, it's situational awareness. Know what's normal for you, you know, what, wherever you are, if it's at home, if it's at church, if it's at school, if it's at work, whatever it is, there's going to be a certain set of norms that you have. And so that's your normal. Um, situational awareness is when things happen outside of that norm. So pay attention to that. Look for those things. Um, you know, don't run around paranoid, but look for them. Um, pay attention. You know, if you get that tingling, you know, in the back of your neck or whatever it is that, you know, something's off, that's okay. Pay attention to it. Look around. Um, you know, I've had my daughter call me up and say, hey, dad, um, maybe nothing but there's some strange guys down at the end of our street and there's quite a few of them they're getting together um and what gave me an opportunity to um prepare for it to um get eyes on it and um it turned out not to be anything but i was ready for it and it was just because she was just driving away and saw something that was out of the norm. And so situational awareness, use it. Um, now, anytime a situation comes up with somebody um, at church or anywhere, if you can, 
try to de-escalate the situation. There's, there's no sense in anybody getting hurt unnecessarily. Uh, if you have to, okay, that's one thing. But if you can de-escalate a situation, that's the way to go. Um, you know, keep everybody safe, keep everybody from getting hurt, um, and just try to diffuse it and de-escalate the situation. Now, preferably, um, a situation like that will be outside of your auditorium. It won't be going on inside. Um, hopefully, any problems are kept outside by your security people outside. Um, but occasionally they do get in. Um, and if you can de-escalate it without anybody getting hurt, uh, that's your best bet. Um, you know, be calm when you're talking to them. Don't be waving your arms around. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm Italian. I wave my arms around when I'm talking. I mean, you see that in the video here. Um, so that's something that I've noticed and I've had to be careful of when I'm talking to somebody is not moving my arms around in a manner that is provoking. So um, try to de-escalate, try to keep problems outside if you can. Um, and uh, it just, it's not worth anybody getting hurt over if you can prevent it. Um, I mean, some guys, like when I was training with the, uh, SWAT guys, we had one guy that um, we were running drills, uh, uh, clearing a building. And the one guy, as soon as he saw the bad guy, he just shot him in the face. Um, personally, um, and the bad guy wasn't armed. Um, I don't want somebody like that with me. I want somebody who is going to be reasonable and consider what's going on. Um, so de-escalate where you can, and um, we'll pick this up next time. And uh, we've got quite a bit more to go over on security, but I, I really think I really thought the self-defense versus vengeance and um, persecution versus terrorism. I think that it was really an important issue for you to consider. So, but with that, uh, let's pray, and uh, we'll uh, call it good for tonight. Father, thank you for this opportunity for us to um, consider these things. Pray that you would just bless this time that we had together, that uh, um, folks would consider these, uh, these things, and that you would protect their churches, that you would keep them safe in their homes and their churches and wherever they are. Um, pray that you would use the uh, um, ushers and greeters and security personnel to be a blessing to all the folks they come into contact with. And we'll thank you for all these things and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good night.